I don't, well, I'm actually originally from England. Uh, I left England in 1982. Uh, I went to school uh, in England, obviously. Uh, Oslo Secondary Modern was my uh, school that I went to. Uh, after I left school in uh, 1972, I enlisted in the Royal Navy, uh, which was interesting because I enlisted as a 16-year-old. You were allowed to do that then. And then uh, I had the opportunity through the Royal Navy to uh, travel the world. And uh, as a, early, a late teenager, I uh, visited countries like uh, West Africa, South Africa, Cape Town, uh, East Africa, or all of the Middle East, went across to Singapore and then down to uh, Australia and New Zealand. And so uh, it sort of satisfied the adventurous spirit that was in me. Well, uh, in 1982, I was working for a company in England called British Nuclear Fuels, reprocessing uranium. And uh, one night I came home from work and my wife had left out the newspaper and a videotape because it wasn't a 24-hour uh, TV then. And I was reading the newspaper and uh, noticed that there was a job uh, advertised for uh, environmental operators in a pharmaceutical industry in the Bahamas. And so uh, we looked at that and uh, we uh, took the opportunity to do a couple of interviews. The actual first interview that they did was uh, for my wife to see if she would be satisfied living in the Bahamas uh, because she wasn't allowed to work because of work permit restrictions. And then the second interview was to in uh, interview me to see whether I had the qualifications. And so that was in the summer of 82 and then in the December it was actually December the 7th of uh, 1982, we packed up uh, our house and we had uh, one child and one child on the way and we moved to the Bahamas to work for Smith Klein Beckman. My wife was very involved in our church, we were Episcopalians, Church of England at the time, and she was very involved in the youth work. And one day she saw in the newspaper uh, that the Salvation Army held camps on the island, on Grand Bahama Island in, in the Bahamas. And so she approached them asking if we could take our youth to the camp. They said, no, but uh, if you want to get involved in our camp program, we can. And we did that summer. And uh, we felt, uh, through our volunteers, we felt the call to ministry. And we made the decision, because uh, I was on a five-year contract with uh, Smith Klein, and the idea was to train a Bahamian to do my job. And once I'd done that, then my contract was finished. And as the contract was coming to the end, we uh, decided that we would enter seminary. Uh, so we moved in 1989 from the Bahamas to Chicago uh, for seminary training uh, with the Salvation Army. Uh, when we finished our seminary training, which was uh, two years, in 1989, we received an appointment with the Salvation Army in Indianapolis. And, uh, our immigration wasn't quite right. We, 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 when we were in seminary, we were on education visas, <coughs> and now we need to be on work permit visas. And uh, in order for that to happen, you had to be, had to be ordained with your uh, religion two years, and we weren't, so we had to uh, move out of the States. And funnily enough, we were given a choice by the Salvation Army, which you don't normally get. We could go back to England, we could go to Canada, or we could go to the Caribbean. And I says, yep, we'll take the Caribbean. And so in 1989, we moved to, uh, the, uh, to Kingston, Jamaica, and we served at the uh, Salvation Army School for the Blind and Visually Handicapped, which was an incredible experience for us. Uh, we, we, you know, seminary didn't prepare us for that. I mean, seminary prepared us for the religious side of things and the Christianity, but, uh, when we moved into the school, we started to work with children who had slight eye issues to children who were deaf, uh, mute, and blind. And that was interesting because whenever we visited those children on the compound that we were working on, the only communication we had with them was they would touch our homes to know that this was the person who visited me every day. That was the only communication. But uh, an incredible time. So we were in Jamaica for two years. And then we uh, <coughs> qualified to come back uh, on work permits. And we'd lived in various uh, places across the states, in, in Iowa, Wisconsin, Indiana, Illinois, across the, across the Midwest. And uh, 
and, and also the, uh, in St. Louis, Missouri. And that was our last appointment with the Salvation Army before we retired back in the uh, summer of uh, 23. And uh, we retired and uh, it just so happened that our son uh, was living in Frankfort, Kentucky. And uh, we retired to Frankfort, Kentucky to live with our son and our two grandchildren. And we were ready to sit back on the couch and enjoy retirement. We got a call to uh, Philly in Anderson, Kentucky uh, while they were looking for somebody for, on a more permanent basis. And so here we are here in Anderson, Kentucky. We'll be here until uh, June uh, next year. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll uh, bring things together, especially this Christmas time when we're doing the, the fundraising and also the toy collections and, and uh, the distribution of toys and also providing meals for individuals. Uh, I, I think uh, that, that life's issues, life's problems can be uh, solved if we can just bring the community together. Uh, I, I see it definitely in Anderson. I've seen it in areas where I've traveled. I mean, I've been to Bangkok, Thailand. I've been to Sydney, Australia. And, and it's the people who have the means uh, who are going on, on in life. And if we can just connect with the people who have means and say, look, we have an issue over here. Can you help us with that issue? And, and I think that's what we uh, I've been trying to do all my life is to, to, to connect people who really want to help and, and, and let them know there's people that need help, you know. Being a spiritual person, I, I, we sensed a call of God on our lives. I remember that in the Bahamas when we were just getting involved in the Salvation Army, uh, I would make a, a phone call to my wife. Again, I was working at the, at the Farn Vesukal plant and and usually on night shift, so I would, on, on night shift I would make a call about 10 o'clock in the evening and my wife and I would just chat about the day's events and what's going on in our life. And uh, we started to chat about the Salvation Army officers who were in the Bahamas at the time who we were working with. And uh, my wife talked about the fact that she, she felt the call to, to ministry. I, I sensed also the call, but it was at, at a different time and, and during that telephone call we decided that uh, we would talk to the officers about uh, uh, helping with the Salvation Army. Uh, again, I said earlier that uh, I've always been a doer and it just felt right, you know, it just felt right. Now with the Salvation Army, we, we are an army, we have rules and regulations and what have you, and we get assigned, we don't get a choice of where we, we go. Uh, now in retirement, obviously I chose, we chose to come to Henderson, but over the years when, uh, I remember we were in Springfield, Missouri for 10 years and all of a sudden we get a call to say we need for you to transfer you to and, and off we went. And so it's sort of a, uh, it's a stand up and salute type situation so that's why we've lived in many places. Uh, but whenever we've gone to a place again we both as a couple look at where our gifts can be used best. You know, again, my wife leads to program. I lead to uh, working out in the community, also on finances, making sure that we have uh, the financial undergirding to support the programs that my wife is looking after and developing. I think one particular story I remember was in Des Moines, Iowa. It was uh, probably this time of year and uh, a gentleman, uh, we were, the building was sort of locked down uh, for the evening and we, uh, there was a gentleman knocked on the door and he came in and uh, he, he was suffering from the cold and I remember that uh, my wife uh, got on her hands and knees to, to take off his shoes and his, uh, and his socks and underneath found that he was uh, uh, suffering from frostbite. Uh, you know, and she, uh, she, she bathed him, bathed his uh, feet, and uh, gave him obviously fresh, fresh uh, 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 socks as well. And uh, we then were able to connect him to a, a local uh, shelter in order that he didn't live out. We discovered he was living out in an old rail car down by down by the river, and uh, we managed to get him into a shelter and. Uh, and, and obviously, we don't know the end of that story, but that impact of that moment uh, was a relief to him and, uh, you know, and, a, and a great sense of uh, uh, 
the fact that we were able to help him in that moment and get him into a shelter for the, for the evening. Wow, uh, <clears throat> you know, again, we, we did 34 years and we're obviously looking forward to retirement, like most people look forward to retirement. And it's, you know, you, you finish on a Friday and then you wake up Monday morning and think, oh, what do we do now? We've always been connected, you know, as, as retired officers, we'll always be connected to the Salvation Army in our local congregation, which we were, were within, uh, with in Frankfort, Kentucky. And uh, we got involved in vacation Bible schools and did odd preaching assignments and things like that. So the disconnect is a difficult thing because you've been doing it all your life, you know. And uh, it, it just the fact that when uh, you get that call and when somebody says Anderson, Kentucky, the first thing I had to do was Google and find out where's Anderson, Kentucky. And I noticed it wasn't too far away. It was interesting because we had a, also a post-retirement uh, opportunity last Christmas in Princeton, Indiana, and it just happens to be on the 41, and so here we are, a bit further south, but in Anderson, Kentucky. Uh, but uh, just the fact that uh, we can utilize the, the, the things we've learned over the years, the skills, the, uh, the, the, we can utilize when we've been successful and also avoid the pitfalls you know, of, of 34 years and bring it here to Anderson and use the gifts that God has given us in order to uh, serve the people that he puts across our door every single day.